Number 1. Castro Fortress. Surely the best introduction to the city and its epic landscapes is to survey them from the granite walls of this 17th century fortress. From this commanding position the Vigo's estuary, harbor, historic quarter, mountainscapes and the size islands will all be on show. The fortress was an artillery installation, designed to repel attacks on Vigo by the British Navy during the Portuguese Restoration War. Number 2. Parque del Monte Castro. The park around the fort isn't so much an urban pleasure garden as a wild mountain right in the middle of the city. If you fancy a workout you can tackle Monte Castro on foot, and even though it's a challenging walk there are lots of interesting features to divert your attention. One is the Iberian settlement on the lower slope, where they've restored three Bronze Age conical stone dwellings. Number 3. Size Islands. Allow a day or two for this stunning uninhabited archipelago that sits at the entrance to the Vigo estuary. During the summer there are two companies, Mar de Ons and Navia Naviera, running ferries at roughly half-hour intervals from the harbor to the islands. You can stay overnight at the campsite, which provides tent rentals, but you'll have to book early as the 800 berth site fills up quickly. Number 4. Beaches on the Size Islands V. The Size Islands beaches deserve another entry, because you may not encounter more exquisite bays anywhere in the world. Indeed, Playa de Rodas often qualifies for the top 10 lists of the best beaches on the planet, and is an almost paradisiacal place if you want to sunbathe and swim in summer. It's a landward beach, shielded from the open ocean and with perfect white sands that add an aquamarine glow beneath the water on sunny days. Number 5. Fish and Seafood. You have to try the divine oysters that are caught right in the Vigo estuary. At Calle de las Ostras, Street of the Oysters, they're perfect raw with a pinch of lemon and a glass of the local Albarino wine. The fish and seafood in Vigo are amazing. They say that this is down to the temperatures and type of plankton in the local waters. If you don't know where to start, just order a mariscada. Number 6. Galician Wine. Vigo is in Galicia's Rias Baixas wine region, which like most of this part of Spain makes, pleasingly acidic whites with the Albarino grape variety. They are the ideal pairing for the region's amazing seafood. If you visit the city between February and May you should drop in at a Furancho if you get the chance. These are cellars, often part of private homes. Number 7. Casco Velo. Vigo's old town is set on a slope that meets the estuary at the old port, with alleys that lead onto handsome arcaded squares like Praza da Constitución. This is the part of the city where fishermen's houses and grander buildings like plush townhouses and the 19th century church of Santa Maria were set side by side. Almost all were built with Galician granite, which gives the old town a dignified atmosphere distinct from many Spanish old quarters. Number 8. The Ensanche. In the 19th century Vigo grew dramatically as the canning industry became one of the city's main sources of income. Most of the entrepreneurs behind this boom were from Catalonia, and the posh Belle Epoque apartment buildings they constructed are still standing in the Ensanche district, east of the Casco Bello. Number 9. Samil Beach. You don't have to go as far as the size islands for a day at the beach, there are 45 in total around Vigo. Most convenient is Samil, just where the Lagares River meets the Atlantic, and when you're sitting on these sands or walking along the promenade you'll have the size islands and Vigo's mountains as your scene. The beach is 1,700 meters long and has a load of leisure facilities like swimming pools, basketball courts and a five-a-side football pitch. Number 10. Ermita de Nosa Senora da Guia. On the northeast side of the city, right next to the estuary is the 100-meter Monte da Guia. Cloaked in evergreen and deciduous woodland, it's one of the largest parks within the city, and offers an instant escape from the traffic and activity on Vigo streets. At the top, and with far-reaching vistas, is the shrine of Nosa Senora da Guia. Hope you like this video. For more videos, please subscribe to our channel.